Assalamu alaikum. I'm Aksa Tariq, the editor in chief for the CXO Media Properties in Pakistan. And on behalf of my editorial team, uh, we'd like to welcome you to the CIO Pakistan Year Ahead Summit, um, celebrating CXO Media brands completing their 14 years in Pakistan. Um, today's session um, is another one as we do live report building for the CISO Insights. Uh, this is something that's uh, done internationally as well, where reports like State of the CIO for the current year are produced on an annual basis. And we're bringing these live report building sessions to you to understand how um, to understand and also landscape the enterprise technology space. Today, I have with me two information security experts, and I'd like to quickly welcome them and have them introduce themselves and also talk a little bit about you know, their own career background. Uh, I have with me uh, Mr. Mohammed Qasim. He is um, you know, the wing head for IT security at National Bank of Pakistan. And I have with me uh, Mr. Faisal Imtiaz. He is the InfoSec expert at National Information Technology Board Pakistan. Um, so Faisal Saab, if we can start with you. Uh, thank you, Aksa. Uh, I'm Fasan Jas, working as an information security expert with National IT Board. Apart from that, uh, I have I'm an advisor member for National Motorway Police. I'm advisor member of Safe City Islamabad. I'm advisor member for 20 J Ministry and uh, Finance Ministry. Uh, my primary role uh, to this department is to advise them on technology. My secondary role. Uh, an advisory section. I'm the advisor to the PM office of the Pakistan for the information security. I'm uh, advisor to the president and uh, cabinet automation system. Uh, that's the main uh, focus area of NITB. Uh, is uh, concerning about the NITB. NITB have the mandate uh, to digitalize and automate the federal government of Pakistan. Uh, you know, we have uh, the journey from the classical government to the gout tag. This journey include whenever we have uh, we were the era of the classical uh, government, NITV have enabled automation of the government function. Uh, that's enable better servant uh, better services to the citizen of the Pakistan. And Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah NITV is working hard in achieving these goals. Thank you. And yes, we've seen that for sure, especially in the last one year with the with the first uh, policy coming out of Pakistan for national cybersecurity. I think there are a lot of interesting things and insights that you can share with us and we look forward to that. So Qasim Saab, yeah. over to you. Okay. Uh, so my name is Mohammed Qasim. Uh, I head the uh, security area for National Bank of Pakistan. Uh, uh, and I've been into uh, security and architecture for over a couple of decades now. And uh, to be very honest with you, started off my career in cybersecurity back in 2000, but it was not considered as a as an area of expertise or a professional uh, uh, job that you could do. It was back then. It was just uh, everybody was a hacker. So, so that was the era that I started off in, and then I decided not to pursue it as a career because because it was not identified as a career and it was not agreed upon as a career. So uh, moving on, uh, did architecture work for several international organizations uh, and then started working for National Bank of Pakistan, which is a wonderful, wonderful place to work for. And that's about it, I would, would like to say. So, so yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, so my first question to you as we, as we sort of, you know, try and build um, these insights would be, uh, you know, we, we've seen a lot of... Um, Pressing issues when it comes to cybersecurity. You you rightly said that you didn't even think that it was you know worth pursuing a career in. But now more and more sort of uh, uh, you know preference or priority has been given to developing a cybersecurity department and also investing heavily in it when it comes to de deploying technologies. Right uh, with the growing digital footprint that all of us have in our day to day lives, large enterprises of course have a different focus. Consumers have a different focus. If I was to quickly ask both of you to sort of identify what are the top areas of priorities for businesses today or for the government today um, in terms of 2022, this is what the forecast looks like uh, when we're breaking it down. So well, you I want Faisal to go first? Sure, either either one. Oh. Okay, I, I, I'll go first. Faisal, sir, with your permission. Uh, see, the thing is that uh, at this point in time, during these days, 
when there was covid pandemic and everything all the organizations across the board whether it's a small organization whether it's a, it's, a, it's a burger shop or whether it's it's a large multinational bank see they all started moving towards digitalization now at the core of the digitalization there are several uh, uh, purposes or the ideas or goals to achieve that but there are two prime purposes one is to capture the digital revenue stream that is a probable potential out there and the second one is to enhance customer experience these are uh, the two major areas now if we look at that then uh, in any scenario there has to be a business process re-engineer so that you can like your manual process converts into a digital process now the problem that that lies in the in the in the arena of pakistan that initially enterprise architecture was not considered to be a, a, a stream that is required to make sure that what you're going to do but if we look at the construction industry or anything that we are going to build we have to have a blueprint first and when it comes to security that security needs to be ingrained from day one security is at the heart of your digitalization so when organization tends to do that some organizations think of security as a wrapper that can be part of the end product as a wrapper only but we need to realize that security is not the wrapper it is part of the content that is wrapped inside so uh, when we talk about digitalization then, then there, there are certain priorities that we need to straighten out that whether we are going to uh, just digitalize it and forget about it or we are going to ensure that the uh, availability and confidentiality of that information that is being exposed out of the organization is being considered the prime objective so for me uh, at this point in time it is making sure that organizations realize that the c level executives or the senior management has to uh, have that in in their strategy so uh, once that is built in then then everything else becomes easy then rest is just operations and execution of the plan it is always the plan that has to be in place first so this is these are my two cents baki fasal saab is is a great expert on this so he he could shed more light on this okay talk about the digital government and the digital space uh first moit and we people have very clear vision how we are going to save our digital space so if it is for the investor or it is for the government uh first thing we focus on the people process technology uh for let's first call, call about the processes the primary uh, thing that was missing in cyber security space of the pakistan were the policies and laws uh, we have established the uh, cyber security policy uh, recently we have successfully alhamdulillah establish the data privacy privacy policy the cloud policy and uh, these are the basic rules how uh, by law we are going to protect our cyber space for the this were the part of the processes uh, we have the policies and currently uh, after that we are going to establish the uh, national cyber security framework uh, we have the national certainty place uh, alhamdulillah uh, soon you will see it's the full body uh, they are very talented guys alhamdulillah they are the onboarding process uh, process in progress uh, after that uh, establishing this framework we have to assure its implementation in government level and in private level uh let's talk about the cyber uh, security policy for every organization you will have the cyber security framework and your org organic organogram you will have the ciso and you will requ required cyber security principles uh for the data privacy policy it's same like gdpr if someone is doing a business in pakistan cyberspace he will assure that the data of the citizen of the pakistan are assured if it is traveled across the broader the surety will also uh, mention in the policy apart from that we are also looking for uh, establishing uh, the people the capacity of the uh, country last uh, we have arranged the cyber hackathon uh, this was the first event, first type of event in pakistan uh, that was arranged from the government in fact alhamdulillah 
we have completed the session with a very good manner in which the red team guys come from all over pakistan and the good thing is that we have find the hidden talent in pakistan i'm uh, giving an example one of uh, the guy that was uh, st studying in fsc it's from uh, for um, remote area that is i think uh, shikapura or somewhere uh, he was unable to continue his study but he was a hard coded red team member i mean he have given tough time to all those guys that were professional cyber security but again uh, due to financial reason he was unable to continue he was just uh, fsc pass alhamdulillah alhamdulillah uh, after uh, uh, his scoring in that event uh, he got job offer alhamdulillah and now he is earning well so we are focusing on all these things our people our process and our technology for the technology point alhamdulillah uh, when this uh, cyber security uh, framework will be properly established we are focusing on protection of our critical infrastructure and again same uh, is our policies are established so every investor will have the guarantee if he is investing in pakistan he will have the guarantee of his investment in a term of cyber security so um building building on to some of the themes that both of you have identified um if i would ask you what are what do you anticipate will be the greatest security related challenge you know uh, faisal sahab some of the things that you've said resonate very closely because you know um in the last two years we've been reading a lot of these reports and a lot of these global trends which show that you know data analytics and cyber security these are top skills that people now require to get the kind of jobs that are you know available openly in the market um given that you know globally also the trend has shifted towards or the focus has been towards information security what are the greatest security related challenges for your organizations in this year so this could could include a multiple of things and if you could just elaborate a little bit for both sectors um, that each of you represent uh, for our organization i think uh, uh, let's talk uh, literally we are all pakistan uh, and uh, one thing uh, we have every uh, i mean common taking security for granted i mean security will never ever taken for granted uh, and again uh, previously we don't have any enforcement uh, on the national level uh, i means if someone is doing secure uh, was adopting a uh, security it was its goodwill and apart from that uh, if it's a private sector so the company ceos and the owner were uh, addressing it to ensure its uh, business protection so uh, that was the major ch challenge people were taking uh, taking security for granted uh, and alhamdulillah by applying these policies now everyone is compelled and enforced to uh, take the security seriously because uh, uh, you know in security process the biggest part of the chain is human so if human is well aware he is well driven towards security uh, there is less chance of getting compromised so in my organization or in my surrounding wherever i uh, i do provide trainings or uh, i do provide consultancy or i i have also surrounded uh, seen it in surrounding there the taking security for granted or like in informal way is the major challenge and um i'd also like uh, kasim sahab as you answer this question i'd like you to talk a little bit about you know uh, you know humne in the last couple of months or the last one year we've seen a lot of like local organizations being targeted right and this could be because of a multitude of reasons and keeping that in mind what do you think will remain the greatest security related challenge for organizations like yours in 2022 well uh, i'll talk about the industry in general and uh, let's say for example uh, the the recent challenges that has been faced by uh, several industry um, organizations or 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 for that matter outside the industry will basically cyber terrorism and state sponsored attacks are a reality of the day we need to understand after the uh, the nsa leaks and their uh, a certain individual that moved out to uh, russia uh, we we came to understand that this is not this is a rabbit hole and it goes so deep that nobody has any clue 
See, the problem is when we look at the uh, challenges that we have in cyberspace, then uh, the, there are like 500 of those people can identify who are, who are far more uh, educated and expert in that area. But the base problem always remains the same. You can have so many vulnerability management programs. You could have threat modeling in place. You can have, have network forensics, IDS, IPS. You name the tool that could be there. But the problem is the zero day attacks. See, when a zero day comes in, let's say, for example, a, a space organization of some country uh, got compromised just on one zero day. And that zero day was based out of some uh, operating system that was there and it was not patched. It was an old operating system. So we need to realize one thing. Even though you're 100% ready for the uh, attacker to come in, but you're not 100% sure that you will win that fight. Now, this is the biggest challenge. When you say you have a zero day in place, probably somewhere, some hacker in the garage, a kid in the garage can, can, can make a CISO of a huge organization cry like a baby. That's not the point. The point is it can happen. So we need to realize that this is a real threat. It's not like somebody's going to come and show you the gun and snatch your phone. That is a reality. Exactly like that, cyber attacks are a reality. We need to accept the fact that anything and everything that can go wrong will go wrong when it comes to cybersecurity, right? So, so this is the major challenge. And uh, rightly said by Faisal Saab, as he identified, that this awareness campaigns, this awareness arena that government of Pakistan is doing, this the NITB is doing, there are several other organizations, NTISB, FIA Cybercrime Bank, NR3C, uh, and not to forget our, our beloved cybersecurity hero of, of the country, Mr. Ammar Jafri. I mean, the, the services that these guys are doing, they're, they're just making people aware. You need to realize there is a threat. The first thing to mitigate any problem is to realize that this is a problem. And uh, this is a wonderful thing that is happening. The, the, the awareness that is going on, the people are talking about it. Now you see it in the media. Like five years back, you never heard any news pertaining to cybersecurity or computer. computer breach. Now at least they call it cybersecurity breach. So, so this is the sort of awareness that, that everyone has to do. It's not just that Qasim will go out and do it or Faisal Saab is going to go out and do it or somebody else is going out. Everybody has to play their part. Everybody has to add their two cents. Students, uh, uh, I had a word with, uh, I was, sorry, I was watching a video by a, a cybersecurity legend of our industry, Mr. Farooq Nair. And he so rightly mentioned that when he was in Canada, he was working with the government to introduce security education as part of the course curriculum. And he's trying to work that in Pakistan as well. So this is the level of awareness that we need to give to our youth that, see, this is a problem. This can happen. It could be snatching, could be stuff. But we don't say that the Facebook account you have made in 12 years or 15 years, that could be a threat to your privacy. We don't educate those things to our So this needs to be a change. There needs to be a paradigm shift where Everybody needs to realize that, yes, there is a problem, there is a probable threat, and we need to curtail it accordingly. Um, on that note, I'd also like you to elaborate a little bit about, um, you know, uh, Faisal Sabne, he rightly pointed out there were there were insider threats, of course, that make up for a large war. What are some of the things that, you know, uh, meeting governance or compliance regulations, of course, talent is a big issue that remains in Pakistan. Um, I know that uh, Ignite, when they were going around the country trying to find that talent pool, there were a lot of um, sort of, there were a lot of youngsters who were eager to sort of learn the skill and sort of take it forward. But that that gap still remains on um, identifying and of course nurturing that kind of talent. Um, then there are other issues like you know managing security or addressing risk around mobile devices with this work from anywhere culture that's come about. Are any of those um, seemingly like the priority for 2022 or as well, or is that sort of uh, a thing of the past? Well, basically, this is the only way forward. 
the problem is when we say there are, there, there are certain talents that that are hidden we need to discover them see it's not the problem of education we live in a digital era anything and everything a kid wants to know is available on the internet there may be some some paid services but there are free services out there see it always boils down to the will Wasim Akram wouldn't be the Sultan of the Swing if he had thought that यार मुझे कोई अच्छा trainer मिल जाएगा वो मुझे सिखाएगा तो I could be there. No, nobody teaches anybody anything. All a, a mentor or a, or a senior person can do is show you the direction. They can always show you the door. You are the one who has to walk through that door. So on that part, के आप कहें अगर के यार government needs to do it. Yes, government का role है. लेकिन एज एन इंडिविजुअल एज ए सिटीजन इज इंट इट माई रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी इफ आई सी देर इज अ प्रोबेबल थ्रेट एंड आई कैन इम्प्रूव पीपल्स लाइफ बाई डूइंग समथिंग आई शुड बी डूइंग इट सो गोइंग बैक टू द पॉइंट के यार एजुकेशन एजुकेशन इज नेवर द प्रॉब्लम इट्स द विल यू जस्ट नीड टू टेल दैम यू जस्ट नीड टू मोटिवेट दैम दैट दिस इज एन एरिया योर मोटिवेशन कुड बी अर्निंग गुड मनी यू कुड डू बग बाउंटी इन अर्न द मनी or you could learn about it and do something better for the society so see what what government of pakistan is doing coming out with new policies procedures frameworks they're doing the exact same thing they're telling you this is a probable threat you need to be ready for it if if a tsunami is coming in or if there is a there's a flood coming in government does not go out and stops the flood they send you the awareness messages sir see view pe na jaiyega sir fala jagah nahi jaiyega yahan problems hai जैसे गवर्नमेंट की एडवाइजरीज आती हैं फॉर देयर सिटीजन्स फॉर नॉट टू ट्रेवल टू दिस कंट्री और दैट कंट्री तो गवर्नेंस का काम है गवर्नमेंट uh, का काम है अवेयरनेस का लोगों को भी अपना पार्ट प्ले करना पड़ेगा एक प्राइम मिनिस्टर या एक 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 सीनियर एग्जीक्यूटिव किसी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन का या किसी गवर्नमेंट बॉडी की मशीनरी का पार्ट वो बंदा अपना पार्ट तो कर सकता है एंड ही इज ओनली गॉट दैट टाइम टू फिनिश दैट जॉब He cannot go out and tell everybody के बेटा ये ये निश्चित के पचास चीजें हैं ये ओवास की पंद्रह चीजें हैं ये पढ़ो ये PCI के standards हैं they cannot go out and do that you will have to do it and as a Pakistani it is your responsibility to do something better for your country so that is the main idea government can not go out and create programs even though government is still doing that आप देखें कितने इनिशिएटिव्स गवर्नमेंट ऑफ पाकिस्तान के हैं फॉर एजुकेशन फॉर आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस जो जो हमारे प्राइम मिनिस्टर साहब का इनिशिएटिव है और प्रेसिडेंट साहब का इनिशिएटिव है आई मीन दीज आर अमेजिंग कौन सी दुनिया में ऐसा होता है कि गवर्नमेंट अपने जेब से पैसे दे रही है कि भाई खुदारा पढ़ लीजिए तो ये चीजें हैं वी वी हार्डली अप्रिशिएट दीज थिंग्स बट दीज आर द ग्राउंड Um, Faisal Sab, is there something that you'd like to add here in terms of, uh, you know, the 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 growing gap, or like what in 2022 do you think that's still going to remain a focus, or are we advancing to different things now, as uh, as the policy really comes into play uh, for different industries? I think uh, if I I'm uh, I have the vision of 2030 uh, targets of the Pakistan. Around the world, cyber security is among the top target, top challenges that we still face till twenty thirty. I mean, uh, if I am giving the reference, uh, one of the uh, U.S. conference that was uh, arranging arranged in Washington D.C. What were their trend, uh, future challenges that were coming to till twenty twenty five, twenty thirty? That would include uh, the misuse of artificial intelligence. Uh, the cyber security uh, the electronic weapons the bio weapons i mean till 2030 uh, cyber security is among the hot topics that is toward the business case well, <coughs> the entities and government case we know uh, recently cases of the ukraine russia uh, if you are the government if you want your success your cyber security your information security should be your primary goal sorry and that note i'd also like to talk about you know cyber crimes are you know vastly also undercounted because they aren't reported due to either embarrassment fear loss of business and multiple other reasons as well right but now for the first time i think in the last 2 years we've seen a lot of that being done locally 
um, and you know a lot of conversation that we've had with different CISOs is that there is no playbook for us to look at that okay for example and I think every organization at some point has or will uh, god forbid but they will suffer from from something like this right when we're building that playbook for CISOs or information security departments to really understand um, that this is what happens and you know this is the way to sort of tackle that or then counter it right um, what are some of the, the things that have worked um, in the past or do you think, um, you know, based on, of course, the policy that's come out, will, will sort of improve that, that networking between that information security experts and the government as well, as well as private sector organizations? Uh, I think uh, this collaboration is more important. Uh, if we are talking about the country cyberspace, uh, if we have a situation uh, I mean, cybersecurity threat exists everywhere. Attacks exist every year. Uh, the important thing is the mitigation. Uh, there should be a continuous collaboration between among the top CISOs. Uh, we have the similar challenges. If I talk about, let's say, I have I'm an organization A. I'm a financial organization. I'm facing similar challenges. The same challenges will be faced by the organization B. That is financial. If I'm a government organization, uh, I'm organization A, there is a greater chance that organization B of the government will face the similar uh, challenges. Uh, we have the community among uh, our government peoples. We have the community uh, with uh, the CISO of the private banks. In fact, we are well connected and we appreciated that. Because, you know, uh, if uh, talk about the implementation of this uh, cybersecurity, cybersecurity is top-down approach. Uh, we have the business function, we have the business target, we have the organizational uh, existence, why the organization exists, the main function of the organization. To support that function operationally, uh, we talk about uh, what, I mean, uh, the CEO, the board of directors, what they do, the primary function of, let's say I'm a financial organization, they support me, to achieve my function and generate revenue. Same, the CISO will directly report those CIO instead of the technology guys to ensure the threat mitigation or threat diffusion uh, toward the business function. Uh, so if we are, as a CIO and a CISO, we are all among connected uh, and we are aware of what my neighbor is uh, facing the challenges, we can also convince my board of directors as well. Let's say if uh, I am a government organization and I have not faced uh, a security threat that my sister government organization we have faced. Uh, if I am connected with his CISO, he will tell me, Faisal, uh, we have the, this, this kind of situation, but Alhamdulillah, we have tackled in this way. I will communicate to my management that same threat was exist in to organization B that can exist to us. So important thing among uh, cybersecurity is the connectivity. And I think uh, CIO platform is uh, doing their great job to provide us the connectivity. Thank you. Kasim Sab, is there something that you'd like to add on to this? Oh, yes, I would love to add to a lot, a lot of it. So, so, so just give me a couple of minutes and I'll try to. So, so you said initially you said that cyber crimes are, are now on a grow on the growing side, it's on the rise and all that. See, there, are, there, there there's a saying in, in, in information security arena that uh, either you are compromised or either you don't know about it. So so that that fact hasn't dawned on you at the moment. And why I am saying that, if you look at the Prism project, they are monitoring anything and everything. Right. So, so that's one thing. So, uh, there is since it's a, it's it might be a state sponsor, state sponsored or or something else for that matter. But these things are a reality. So, cyber crime uh, after NSA leaks, every kid in the garage has 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 a rat tool for sending onto your mobile and getting everything and everything out of your your mobile, or for that matter, identifying a small vulnerability and compromising an XYZ organization. So, so that's one thing. Secondly, uh, the basics boil down to uh, in, in information security towards risk management, that this, there is a potential risk out there and they, it might materialize. And how are we going to react to that? Now, there are certain organizations 
that are doing communication amongst themselves. But when you look at the banking industry, state bank is playing a phenomenal role when it comes to that. With the cybersecurity awareness messages, with the threat intels uh, going across the board to different organizations, the setting up sessions, PBA is doing a go uh, an awesome job. If you move down from that level, from the regulatory body levels, because this is uh, a regulatory body is what is the gap that is bridging between the organization and the government. So when we come down from the level of the uh, regulatory bodies, there are certain organizations that are doing an amazing job. And I would love to mention PISA and GISSP. And uh, Jafri Saab is also doing a, a Pakistan CERT sort of an initiative. He's trying to build on that so that there is, there is a CERT that helps out people understand what has happened, how it has happened, and what are the probable mitigations to that. So on the, on the ground level, there is still a gap. Let's say, for example, there is an organization that is helping, that is state bank or regulator in any area with the organizations that are there. Then there is PISA and GISSP, which is helping the professionals. Now there is a gap, there is a need for an organization or an initiative that helps our youth, our common men, a normal person who just bought a phone and he wants to make WhatsApp calls to his cousins or friends in US or UK, he needs to realize that he is exposing himself in a digital world where the threats and attacks are a reality. See, the biggest challenge is, Mujhe ji, fala phone pasand hai ya fala phone pasand hai, isme itne megapixel camera aur itni memory. Aap ye bhi aware huye na, over the period of time. You have to do some initiatives in that area where a common man understands what are probable security challenges and how it affects his normal life. If my private photographs or, or anything for that matter, even my bank statement that I've downloaded from the, from the bank's website. So that's not bank's responsibility. My device is my problem. If I am not securing my device, then that is a challenge and that is going to be a problem for me. It could be life altering for people. God forbid if it happens to anybody, but if it does, it alters the way you think. So it is going to leave a scar. So instead of going out, waiting for a scar to happen and then realize that there is a problem we need to handle, this, this area requires an initiative where cybersecurity needs to be uh, taught to people or at least an awareness level that there is a potential threat. Please be aware of it. Har message pe click nahi karna hota, har website pe nahi jana hota. VPN sirf or sirf uh, personal times ke liye nahi hota. Cheeze education learning ke liye bhi hota hai. To ye cheeze bhoat important hai. Is jaga pe thoda sa gap hai. Otherwise government or organizations ke darmiyan gap bridging bhoat achche se chal rhi hai swak. At this point in time. Absolutely. Um, I also want to pick up on, on a thread that both of you sort of talked about, and I'd like to go in a little deeper in there, is that gaining leadership support for cybersecurity. Um, Faisal Saab, you also talked about, you know, uh, there are a lot of people who say that cyber resilience is considered a business priority in their organization with support and direction from the leadership. But a lot of people have also said that, uh, you know, it's become like a, an overall risk management ka, uh, ka part. And owing to this misalignment, you know, many security leaders, CIOs, CISOs have talked about that they are not consulted in business decisions, which can hamper identification. Kasim Sab, aapne shuru mein ek baat ki thi about, you know, that it has to be right when we're setting that blueprint is when cybersecurity needs to become a part of the main ingredient of any, any project, any uh, organization's DNA, really. But that identification or that, that mitigation of security risk um, can, of course, result in less secure decisions. And each organization now, small or large, we've seen, you know, small organizations being targeted. We've seen e-commerce companies being targeted locally as well as globally. Um, what do you think that, you know, um, I'm sure that both of you have a handful uh, of comments or like insights to share here. But what is What's your opinion on, you know, cybersecurity still being an afterthought in way too many organizations, even today? Uh, uh, let talk me with it. Cybersecurity team is in decision, but uh, some organization place it before taking the decision. Some organization place it after taking the decision. I mean, some 
CEOs, board of director take it a proactive approach. Some organization take it a reactive approach. Every important business function, which is generating the revenue, it should be protected by a cybersecurity guy. And uh, I mean, if I, I uh, let, let me share my experience. Uh, I was also a senior security architect uh, to the smart city of government of Kurt. So uh, what were our smart city primary function uh, that can affect the human living there whenever even a small configuration change of device uh, were happening, there will a big committee come here, analyze its risk. Is it to make, uh, is this change will make it vulnerable? Is it, uh, if it, it is vulnerable, how much it can affect the life of a common man? So if you are a financial organization, if you are working with the uh, major business function of your organization, if it is vulnerable, again, if you communicate that to your board of directors, CEO, they will compel everyone to sit this security guy Tell him if he is giving me a green signal, I will take the decision. So important thing for the, all CISOs to communicate uh, who uh, to the communicate the risk. Who is the owner of the actual business function? If I'm a CEO and I have a uh, I'm an investor, so if a security guy come to me, tell me that sir, you are doing this great job, but this is a major risk. So as an investor, I will never take uh, risk on my investment. So again, if someone uh, start involve me before executing the actual risk or involve me at the end, security guy is always there. Okay, so you did talk about, uh, uh, see what, what the crux of your question is that how would a CEO understand what a security expert is saying when he's using every single jargon out there in the book. See, uh, there was a there was a TV series Apprentice by Donald Trump. Uh, and in, in that uh, series, he said, a leader has this has the right to be wrong, but he does not have the right to be surprised. This is what the job of the senior executive or C level executives, the CISOs and, and the head of IT securities and your risk management people. See, the problem is when we go and tell somebody, uh, I want to buy a watch, right? I am not giving the specification. I am not giving the detail. He'll give me the money. I'll go and buy. When I go to the guy and I say, I want a device, just like uh, an Indian movie, thi, Amir Khan, he explains the zipper ko karta hai ke definition. The problem is that we give the zipper ki definition to the C-level. We don't tell them what will do the work. The, 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 the basic challenge that normally I generalize baat karta hu, main generalize baat hi karunga, kyunke, uh, it's, let's not talk about uh, any certain organization. Normally, kya hota hai? a technology guy uh, uh, or, or a cybersecurity expert is so focused on his problems and his challenges that he does not realize that CEO ke challenges kya So you need to align those. You need to tell them exactly in their language, layman term. A CEO could be expert in financial analysis and he is an expert in merger and acquisitions. He is not an expert in cybersecurity. We need to realize that, that. You are the expert. You need to tone it down, make it understandable in the language of risk. Because there is not a single CEO or a president I have seen out there who does not understand what a risk is. So this is why he is a CEO. So you need to make it simple and tell them, sir, these are the probable, uh, probably financial loss, loss of reputation, our data going out and all that. These things you need to make a business case. 99% of the times vendors give you the business case that is always shut down. The problem is, you know, your organization better. You need to identify the tools and techniques that needs to be implemented as per your organization culture and your organization's problem. The problem is business case, ya to vendor de raha hai bichara, jisko kakhni pata hao ta aapki organization ke baare mein, ya wo koi aisa junior level ka koi, koi junior level ki resource de raha ta, probably aakhar mein intern hi kaam kar raha ta normally some organizations. So, wo cheez bahut zaruri hai. Dousra, 
कुछ ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस के साथ प्रॉब्लम होता है उनके पास टाइम नहीं है मेरा प्रोक्योरमेंट प्रोसेस लंबा है जी हमारी बोर्ड मीटिंग्स हैं हमारे पास दूसरे चैलेंजेस हैं वी वांट टू मूव इनटू डिजिटल स्पेस हमारा वेब का नया वर्जन आ रहा है कुड बी एनी रीजन सो उनकी प्रायोरिटीज फर्क है उनके पास बजट है लेकिन उनके पास टाइम नहीं है कुछ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के पास टाइम बहुत है पर बेचारों के पास इतना बजट नहीं है प्रॉब्लम इन्वेस्टिंग टू मिलियन डॉलर ऑन साइबर सिक्योरिटी इज नॉट द राइट वे फॉरवर्ड वेन यूर यूर हैविंग प्रॉब्लम ग्रोइंग द बिजनेस और पेइंग द सर्विस सो वी नीड टू रियलाइज इट विद इन द इन्वायरमेंटल वेरिएबल्स कि यार मेरी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के चैलेंजेस क्या है वॉट इज द बेयर मिनिमम वी कैन डू और दूसरा एक प्रॉब्लम यही बेयर मिनिमम वाला होता है ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में कि हम जाते हैं और हम पूरी दुकान मांग लेते हैं कि बॉस मुझे ये सोल्यूशन भी चाहिए ये सोल्यूशन भी चाहिए ये सोल्यूशन भी चाहिए हम ये नहीं कहते कि दिस इज द बेयर मिनिमम आई नीड दिस इज अ गुड टू हैव दिस इज अ वंडरफुल थिंग टू हैव तो हमको दो तीन स्टेजेस में ब्रेक करके उसको जाके विद द बेनिफिट विद द चैलेंजेस विद द रिस्क उसको डॉक्यूमेंट करके लेके जाए योर सी लेवल विल लिसन टू यू एक तो ये बात थी दूसरी बात जो आपने कही कि ये जो सी uh, लेवल्स पे uh, उस तरीके की uh, वो इंथुजियास्टिक नहीं होते यू नीड टू गेट देम एक्साइटेड सी एवरी सिंगल एग्जीक्यूटिव और और अ प्रेसिडेंट और अ चेयरमैन वुड नेवर वांट के यार उसकी पर्सनल ईमेल्स लीक हो जाए ऑन द इंटरनेट एग्जैक्टली हैपेंड इन द हिलरी क्लिंटन केस विद थर्टी थाउजेंड ई मेल्स दैट जस्ट कॉस्टेड हर दिडेंशियल शेप ऑफ यूनाइटेड स्टेट सो You need to say it in a way. वो एक बादशाह के पास एक आदमी गया था उसने कहा कि बादशाह साहब आपकी जितने भी रिश्तेदार हैं सब आपकी नजरों के सामने मर जाएंगे तो उसको जेल में डाल दिया दूसरा आया उसने बोला आपकी उम्र इतनी लंबी है कि आपके सब खानदान में सबसे ज्यादा उम्र आपकी है तो उसको अनामो कराम नवाजा सो द थिंग इज की यू हैव टू से इट फ्रॉम दी लिस्नर्स परस्पेक्टिव मैंने अपनी बात कह के खुद सुन के खुद चेक साइन करके नहीं देना किसी और ने देना तो मुझे उसका प्रॉब्लम आइडेंटिफाई करके उसके लहजे में उसके मिजाज में उसको बात समझानी जरूर तो ये चैलेंज आता है लोग टेक्निकल बहुत ज्यादा हो जाते हैं समटाइम्स उनके चैलेंजेस होते हैं वो अपने चैलेंजेस में रियलाइज नहीं कर पाते एंड वुड यू से सीट एट द टेबल है depends on the organization to organization for a for a certain xyz organization cyber security would be a huge perspective they would say the ciso ciso should report into the uh, uh into the president some would say ciso would report into risk management some would say ciso should report into it see these are different organizational cultures all together that drive this so uh, probably some people do not want to share uh, share the position in technology where a ciso is your partner some have problem when when it's in the risk department or some uh, compliance department where where they have own personal challenges it's it always boils down to either the egos or people thinking i know everything and whatever i'll be doing is right see technology and information security has to work hand in hand they go together they cannot go their separate ways and deliver no not in the field of digitalization not in the era of information security or cyber age this cannot happen you have to work together you will have to identify common goals and achieve them together if you are going in your separate paths then god have mercy on you that's that's how it is thank you thank you for your input there uh, my next question would be on you know uh, globally it's been identified that there are like three cyber attacks uh, three kinds of cyber attacks that organizations are most concerned about and i'd like to hear the global the local perspective from from both of you um, globally it's been identified that of course ransomware is one social engineering is is on number 2 and then malicious insider activity i know we briefly touched upon these topics as well but to you or your your organization or your industry what are the most relevant ones that you forecast in 2022 will remain so well uh, the biggest challenge that would always be there as as faisal sahab mentioned in his opening remark that people are the major item a person is the weakest link in the chain of cyber security so insider threat would always be number 1 see the problem is a person a person could be a disgruntled employee or could be stupid enough to click a link 
but he's done the job he's played into the hands of your adversaries so so this is critical the insider attack would be the biggest challenge whether he brings his own device whether he he found a usb or usne laga ke dekh li ke dekh lu usme kya hai and all that and you're gone finish and 99% of the cyber attacks that happens in any large organization where the security is through the roof they go attacking the ciso's house or or a privileged user's house their own personal networks infiltrating into their devices and then somehow getting into the organization so so there needs to be an understanding that the insider threat is the biggest threat then comes in ransomware and all that but you can you can surely stop those from happening with certain solutions deployed within your organization whether it be network based solutions or your or endpoint based solutions that's not the point the point is that human being is the weakest link in the chain and they can do stuff they don't even realize what they have done so magnitude ka andaza nahi hota acha yaar meri computer compromise ho jayegi kya fark padega isme aisa hai kya aapke liye nahi hai but that could act as a zombie network that could as act as a trusted device for the networks where you take your mobile phone so insider threat for me is the biggest challenge and it is going to stay there for for decades to come Or as probably I did as, not see a solution for that. As as long as I think people are part of an organization, I think that's always going to be there. Faisal Sab, is there something that yeah. you'd like to add in here? Yes, for me, it's human. I mean, we can manage the technology. Uh, ransomware, it's not that uh, major change. Again, from where the ransomware come, there is the human that do the error, and. let let me talk about uh, the people how they are targeting the ransomware or how they are compromising the organization first they uh, take the threat uh, the knowledge of the organization from osinet i means uh, if i am a person who is going to search uh, or encrypt the major data of an organization what i will do i will search the social media profile if i found the organization ceo ceo from linkedin i will send the request okay he got the request then i am sending some malicious file or malicious link during his office hour he will definitely click you know uh, if he will just click he is the executive he have the privilege in network and i can by doing the lateral movement i can easily reach the core system so Oh, uh, for my point, awareness of the human, or uh, clicking the non-trusted item from open network like social media, like LinkedIn, uh, attending the uh, link or document from uh, any fake profile that can send you that I am uh, ABC, I want a job, so look into my CV. This is the weakest link in my technology. and again uh, of course for the human technology always us uh, the second thing is come for the normal tacky guys we come the edr solution that even if he clicks some unwanted uh, step or some weird compromise start we can see his uh, organizational laptop pc to the process level normal the executive don't want do this that if some it guy or security guy have the knowledge of my laptop what i am doing although it's a process level visibility so again the attitude of the human so for my point of view that is uh, the human that's uh, ignoring the risk ignoring the security or taking it informal that cause the compromise and uh, very quickly i'd also like you uh, both to sort of given your input here what is expected to have a greater influence on transforming cybersecurity in the next two years um, there's a lot of discussion on automation and machine learning and as we rightly pointed all fingers towards uh, the the human link when it comes to cybersecurity do you think that that's going to have a greater influence or is it also going to be something like remote or hybrid work environments <coughs> that have gained more popularity recently well uh, if you if you talk about the uh, the remote working environments or or or, or for that matter with minimum human intervention see at the end of the day you cannot remote uh, eliminate a human being from from a process 
you can automate it you can you can identify checks on it but now the technology trend has shifted in the past four or five years the behavioral analytics and ai has kicked in where uh see for ai to get matured there needs to be a process and a time and a steps that needs to be taken it runs in your environment it understands let's say for example in edr a guy opens his email every day from nine to five one day the guy opens up his email at, at 12 a.m in the in, in the morning so so the edr solution or or, or your your behavior analytics would identify yaar ye is user ka behavior nahi hai. there is something it would generate an alert on the other hand if a ceo gets a call ki ji aapka banda raat ko 12 baje office mein baitha he would right away know ke maine to usko bola hi nahi tha to wo office mein hona nahi chahiye to wo wale factors hain but things are improving we are talking about metaverse these days so uh, this human uh, elimination from the processes is inevitable in a sense that minimal human intervention reh jayegi aakhir but you cannot eliminate 100% human intervention otherwise then we'll have a matrix movie being run in 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 our countries and in our real life so so that is still a bit far fetched but ai under the uh, management and the control and handling by human being is 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 a real possibility and it is a reality in several organizations so human beings are never going out as as far as i see probably i am not that aware but i don't see it going out but yes ai kicking in uh, taking care of your grunt work yes previously we did not have ms excel na haath pe khate chalate the na ab ms excel aur ye sari cheeze improvements aati gayi and we have adopted to it after a period of time these mobile phone will probably get obsolete probably but wo sari cheeze nikalti ja rahi hain aista aista life se to adaptability hai human nature mein wo adaptability aayegi ai is smart enough to handle a human's job i said smart enough not smart exactly in literal sense so a human touch would always be there or even if a tool is being developed by some organization that is like yaar ai based and it will take care of anything and everything in an engineering plant or or in a bank as a teller as well the atm machines bhi aayi na but you can do a certain specific task with those things usme kitna growth aata hai aur kitni advancement hoti hai that is yet to be seen we are open to possibilities but we are not that much ke sold out on it ke ji uh, human beings would get eliminated not at this point in time at least not in my lifetime i'm going to see that but probably yes my kids are going to see that so that's our is acha aksar according to my opinion it's a race between human intelligence and artificial intelligence so if we talk about the artificial intelligence yes they are assisting the uh, human for abnormal behavior in the same way if we talk about the misuse of ai they, there's a bigger challenge for human uh, if we talking about the competition of ai versus ai yes they can diffuse each other up to some extent if we talking about the competition of a uh, even ai versus normal human yes human is very exploitable in future if ai is used is uh, against the human for social engineering attack i think human will be easily seduced and again human will be easily deceived or targeted and again it can be easily hacked so ai is doing a good job for human uh, if we talk about the adversity let uh, uh, talk about some use cases previously we used to uh, provide the capture whether you are human or uh, robot now the ai attack has also covered that challenge i mean if you have the ai your basic level capture can easily decoded by ai so again the ai introduction is in the cyber security and future year is again very challenges now talk about the ai two version one is the good ai the bad ai just like human if uh, we are talking about uh, 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 what is different between a thief and uh, a police thief is a, a human uh, a person with human intelligence with bad intention police is a, per, a person human with human intelligence with good intention so the, in future 
there will be a, a I mean challenge between the good AI AI and the bad AI. And again, uh, it is making uh, the challenge of uh, cybersecurity more, more challenging. I mean, if we talk about the EA versus human, I don't think so. Uh, if we are uh, facing an educated AI versus the normal human, I don't think so that normal human will face it. So uh, with this, I, I would like to add to this. I would like to add to this. Uh, what Faisal Saab gave the twist was, was really amazing. A human being versus AI. Uh, what I believe in that area is Faisal Zab is right and, and, and he, he has a different opinion. He's got a different experience and all that. What I believe is uh, knowing your enemy is the most important thing. If I know that if I'm talking to somebody who's a human being or it's an AI based bot, if I know it, I can, I can fight with it. I've got some chances. So like Shanzu, who said in the art of war, know your enemy. So knowing your enemy is very important. That is true in your real life as well as in cybersecurity. That, that's why we, we, we study the MITRE framework, the attack kill chain, adversary emulation, what my adversary is doing, what the tactics and techniques are. So understanding that area will help us be, build a better defense. So every single organization these days is working on APT groups, understanding their tactics and techniques, how they attack, what their modus of operandi, what their known signatures of the, of the, uh, of the malwares or the hashes of those files that they infiltrate with. So knowing your enemy is critical, whether it's AI or it's, it's, a, it's a boy in the garage, but knowing your enemy, understanding your enemy is critical. So sir, uh, probably, uh, AI will win against the human, but at least human has a chance if he knows he's working against an AI based bot or an AI based engine. So I always believe in hope. So probably. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, with this, I think we would like to now conclude um, our session for today. Thank you both, uh, both our speakers, Faisal Saab and Kasim Saab for joining us today and sharing your valuable insights. If there's a closing comment on what everyone should be looking at on tw in 2022, uh, we'll take that now. And I think uh, this AI, the human, the lack of the human knowledge, this is the back thing of the coming year. All right. Anything from you, Kasim Saab? Thank you so much. It's been an honor sharing a platform with you and, and Faisal Saab. So it's been a pleasure. And uh, I, I hope I have, uh, I have learned something and I've brought it some knowledge that I have. So it's all good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so with this, we'd like to conclude and, you know, just to sort of sum up our discussion, I'd like to talk about, you know, how cyber attacks, you know, is, is known that they would not stop anytime soon, nor has any, you know, magic bullet really been found to resolve all the issues in cyber security. There are clear and concrete steps that leaders can take to best prepare themselves and their organizations for an attack if it ha so happens. Um, so cybersecurity cannot really be looked at as a separate technology, but rather a priority of the system spanning across technology, people, AI processes in the fourth industrial revolution, as our, as our speakers rightly said. Um, you know, the ongoing shift from cybersecurity to cyber resilience is also an important step towards more trustworthy and sustainable future. So when we look at significant digitization, um, you know, and how it's provided a pathway for engagement and connectivity at a time when the world was going through, you know, a complete reshuffle, um, its benefits are clear, but so are the threats. So it's each, it's upon each one of us, as Kassas have rightly said, that it's, you know, it's each individual's responsibility as much as it is of the enterprise that it's made up of. Um, so to assure we maintain a trusted, secure and protected, you know, digital environment, digital Pakistan, it is imperative that the leadership teams better incorporate cybersecurity and break down silos within and between organizations to improve cyber resilience. Um, so with this, I'd just like to quickly commend our government also on all the initiatives that they have taken. It's going to be a slow process and a long one for sure, but it's obviously a foot in the right direction. Um, thank you to both our speakers, to our partner Comtel, and to all uh, viewers watching this. Uh, you can reach out to us for uh, once we publish the report on state of the enterprise, the CISO outlook. Uh, with this, I'd like to sign off. Thank you and Allah Hafiz. Thank you.